Hey, what's up, everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique, and today we're checking out Sound Particles. This is like CGI, but for audio. <laughs> so CGA, it's a computer program that automatically creates sound space for audio files, and it does an incredible job, and there are so many applications for it. My mind is racing with what's possible, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started making a fully immersive war scene. And the incredible job that this program does has lent uh, helping hands in blockbuster films like Star Wars, the last one that just came out, Frozen 2, and just many, many, many other huge films all utilize this program, and I'm gonna show you why, hopefully, inside of this video. It's gonna be a very brief overview of what's possible, but I think it's going to blow your mind. Anyway, let's jump into it. I mean, that just sounds so cool. And it was all generated pretty much automatically. Uh, I'm gonna show you the process, but you know, once you get your files in there, you just set up some parameters, you, send up, you set up some restrictions and kind of what you want things to be in the virtual space, and then you go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and just start from scratch. This is the starting page, and there are a bunch of templates in here, and I'm going to play you some of these just so you can kind of get an idea for what this is capable of. So this is a sound particle, and what you're going to do is load an audio file into sound particles, and then sound particles will take that audio file and apply it to this, and this is your XY coordinate, and it does have 3D space. Uh, this is VR compatible, so you can make, if you're working on a VR game, or something like that, this works. Uh, Adobe Atmos, it's compatible with everything. Let's just listen to the original sound file. So that's the original sound file, and now this is that sound file applied to that sound particle. And you can imagine yourself here in the middle of the XY. All right, so there's a lot more than just panning the sound right there. There's a lot more happening in terms of manipulation of the sound. Now, this one is flying out of a cave. So it kind of sounds like a helicopter. And what we have is a particle emitter emitting particles, and then that sound file will be applied to each one of those particles, and it will whiz past us, which are we're positioned right here, and let's see what that sounds like. All right, so it really sounds like, you know, a bunch of helicopters are whizzing past our face. Now, this is a good opportunity for me to say, or a good point in time for me to say, you should have headphones on for this video. So we're actually gonna go ahead and just start with an empty slate here. And when I start with an empty slate, it automatically gives me a microphone. So the microphone is right here, and you can think about that in terms of the camera. Where is the camera inside of your, it could be a CGI project or inside of your movie. That's essentially where the viewer is or the camera. The next thing I wanna do is add an emitter. So I've got a particle emitter or a particle group. I'm, I, excuse me, I'm gonna add a particle group. And when I add that, I've got my particles. And if I play the time here, nothing is happening because right now, if I import some sounds, the sounds will populate over here and they'll all happen at the same time for the same duration. And there really won't be a lot of movement. So I'm gonna come over here and general, we can choose how many particles. And let's say we're gonna have 200 particles. As soon as I do that, the graph updates over here. Now here we can control the volume. I'm gonna leave it at zero. And next up, we need to import some audio files. So for this particular track or this particular group, I'm gonna be doing the gunshots. 
So I'm just going to rename it in the description. It will update over here, and now we can stay organized. So I can add audio files by clicking this plus button, or I can just drag and drop. So I've got some Warfare samples here from Loop Masters. So I'm going to leave a link to them in the video description if it's something you want. And what I'm looking for are gunshots. So what I'm going to do, there are a ton in here. So what I'm going to do is just come in and select a few and drag them in there at random. Okay, so I've got a bunch of them selected here. Just drag and drop them inside of the program and go ahead and minimize that. Now, I can always come in here and remove them if I want. If I hear something that doesn't really work, I can go in and do it that way. But for right now, we're just gonna leave them all checked here. If I wanna uncheck one, you can do it right inside of the program. You can easily add more files too, and we should be good to go. Down here is just a preview, whatever is selected. Cool. So next up, we've got the starting. And right now it's on a torus. And what I wanna do is choose a rectangle. And you'll see, here we go. And remember, this is kind of where we are. Next, I'm gonna make it a mile wide. So a square mile size scene inside of our movie or whatever. That's about 1,609 meters. So I'm just gonna type that here. Boom. And you'll see that it's updated here. And depth. Boom. Now it doesn't really look different here and that's because it's automatically updated to uh, scale and we should be good to go. So right now, again, if I go ahead and render this, it renders very quickly, it renders online. We're just gonna have a massive explosion essentially. We're gonna have 200 sound particles playing at the same time. Yeah, it's too much. Although this is a great way to make sort of huge explosions but I digress. The next thing I wanna do is add some audio modifiers down here at the bottom. If I click right here, I can jump into delay. This is going to delay some of the particles before they show up. And when a particle shows up, remember it plays an audio file. So once you select that, you can come down and choose a different max delay time. So I'm gonna put in 60 seconds. That's gonna make our audio clip longer, about a minute. We can also jump in here and choose the distribution or the probability distribution. There are some presets. Each one of those presets comes with a number of different parameters that you can adjust. So I'm just gonna leave it on uniform for now. Hit apply and hit render. And if I pull this open, this is what we've got now. So you can really hear that we've got kind of a stereo field going on. There's a lot of gunfire. We're kind of in a war zone. I do want to point out that something like this is meant to be in the background. It's not meant to be like if you see a guy shooting a gun, you're going to have to manually put that in your computer program or your scene or your movie or whatever. This is meant to be the kind of audio in the background to make things come to life. Let's go ahead and add some explosions now. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click add. I'm going to add a particle group. It's going to give me another one. We're going to do the same thing. For this, I'm going to leave it at 100. I want less explosions. I do want to change it to a rectangle. I'm going to make it a mile square, so 1609. And instead of gunshots, I'm just going to come in and choose some explosions. Now, I'm not gonna pull in these two. This is a different sound pack from Loop Masters. These two right here are essentially what we're creating right now, so I don't wanna pull those in. It will just really muddy things up. In fact, I'm gonna pull in everything below 10 seconds because uh, I just wanna keep things fairly clean here. So I'm just gonna click, drag and drop, and let that import. All right, so now that that's imported, come down here. And again, let's come down here and add some modifiers. What I'm going to do is add a gain modifier, and this is going to add gain differences. And if I come down here, I can actually come in and choose the minimum. And instead of 12, I'm going to boost that up to negative uh, 24. I can actually just manually put that in. And I actually forgot to do that on the gunfire, so we're going to go back and do that. So now that I have that, I'm going to apply it. We're also going to add a delay here as well. So let's jump in here and change the maximum value to somewhere around 30. Great. Apply, jump out, and let's come back into this. And for the gunshots, also add a gain modifier, and let's just leave it at 12, and let's just hit render and see what we have now.
That sounds pretty gnarly. I mean, once you have your settings dialed in here, you're good to go. If I want to come up and generate a new kind of sequence of guns, I just got to click this button right here, and it's going to randomly seed the files that are chosen for each one of the particles. So we'll get a different result. And we can do the same thing with you know, the, the explosions, if I just go ahead and rename it. And you can really boost this up. For example, I can put this at, I, I believe, 100,000 particles for this one particle group. That is so many. So for a film or something, maybe you want less bombs or you want more bombs, all you need to do is change the particle number. Let's come in and really boost up the gunfire. Let's say things are crazy. And let's jump back into bombs. And you know what? Instead of 50, let's just go crazy. Let's go 200. Just see what happens. All I need to do is adjust those few parameters, hit render, and this program is going to give me back something completely unique and do all of the heavy lifting for me. If you can imagine going through and placing each one of the guns in each position inside of the field of audio, I mean, that just would take so much time. I mean, that's a crazy war zone happening right there. It's all around us. We're immersed inside of it, and it's really, really cool. Now, there are a ton more features inside of this program. This is not even scratching the surface of what's possible. You can automate the camera position or the microphone position, rather, and move through that scene with the camera. Uh, you can actually import CG data and make particles follow CGI objects inside of a CGI scene. And you can actually import that data into this program and they'll sync together. And then you can actually make the audio move around with that CGI element and just make things really, really cool. And that's a fully automated process where you don't need to like do it by hand, which is just crazy. So I'm gonna leave it there as kind of an introduction to this pro computer program. I may be doing some more specific tutorials. If there's something specific you're looking to know, leave it in the comments as always. I always read them and maybe I'll be able to do a specific video tutorial for any good questions. Sound Particles is available now on pluginboutique.com. Highly suggest checking it out. I've been Joshua Casper and I'll see you in the next video.